before I open this up, I want to show you guys. So this is my little thermostat there. And so the ambient temperature in, uh, in this garage is about 20 degrees Celsius, uh, and which Fahrenheit is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or, or and it's about 27% humidity. So that's the ambient temperature and humidity in our house uh, right now. Okay, I'm gonna open this guy up. And I've got uh, so latches at the top here. That's really important in case, you know, I've got uh, nieces and nephews that are little and, and they love coming in here and, you know, eating all the snacks and stuff. And so I would hate for them to come, come in one day and, and open the door and leave it open and allow a bunch of, you know, flies or something to get in. Okay, so the, the first thing we're gonna look at is, turn this guy on, is the temperature is 14 degrees Celsius or 57 degrees Fahrenheit and 49% humidity in this building, in this little room here. And it's right next to uh, a masonry heater that uh, uh, I built. Uh, it's, I'll do another video on that in the future as well, but it's, it's a fantastic little piece of equipment. Um, there's no fire in it right now. The, um, the fire that you saw me standing beside this morning uh, I have two fires a day and once the fires goes out, it stores all the heat in the you know, 5,000 pounds uh, of thermal mass. And, um, and the reason for that, that why these two things are really close together like this is um, I actually, uh, particularly in the winter time when it's cold outside, like right now our kind of average temperature outside in the mornings, we're, it's about early fall here. And we're getting around, you know, minus minus five to minus ten is what, Celsius is what the the temperatures are. I think in Celsius. I'll try to convert to Fahrenheit as much as I can, but um, I I don't uh, I don't think that way. So <clears throat> it's about five or ten degrees Celsius minus uh, five or ten degrees Celsius outside. And so I I actually want to um, to have uh, airflow, which is one of the other principles. In, uh, in these buildings is you wanna have airflow because that stops you know molds or kind of smells from developing or some of the vegetables and fruits give off gases that can cause problems to other things like, uh, like ethylene. Apples give off ethylene that can cause other root vegetables to go rotten. Uh, and so this pipe goes outside and allows air to flow into this building. I can, I can just feel it just pumping in right now. And, and so depending on how cold it is outside, I can adjust this vent to allow more or less cool as well as airflow in. And then having it right next to this, this stove in the winter now, because otherwise this building would, this would freeze. Um, and when it's really cold, when it's minus 40 out Celsius or Fahrenheit outside, I have to shut it right down. We don't get it very often, but uh, it, it allows me to kind of play around with the, uh, uh, the temperature uh, as well as the humidity, because the more air I let in, kind of typically it's it's we live in a really dry climate, and so the uh, uh, it allows, uh, I guess, it, for me to play around with that temperature and humidity. But having it right next to the stove here, uh, make sure that it doesn't freeze while still allowing optimal uh, ventilation. So th how I how I did this, made this construction. This is just a. Um, this building, this like it's just like a standard kind of. There was a, a a corner here, and you can see it was just a doorway, and so all I did was this was kind of dead space that wasn't being used. You know, it was kind of just a, I put my boots and stuff there, and so I decided I was gonna cl close it off, make it insect proof. So by doing that, putting you know weather stripping all the way around. So that when these doors close, it um, it gets for a really tight seal, and and there's another piece of weather stripping on that, and so this thing is totally insect proof. I've had meat and cheese sitting in here for for months, right through the summertime, and have not had any issues with with insects or anything getting in. I'm really excited about that. I wasn't sure how that was gonna work out, um, and then there's there's a you know a cold air vent that comes in at the bottom and again, and then hot or cold air sinks, hot air rises. And so there's another vent, grab my flashlight here. There's a hole right there. And that guy 
goes all the way up to the highest point in the ceiling. And again, because it's right next to this stove here, um, hot air rises, um, and so it, it actually creates a thermal siphon. When this, when this building, these doors are closed, it creates an airtight seal. I actually have to, like I can feel like the resistance because there's so much, um, like there's, there's, there's hardly any place for the air to go when I close that door. Um, but what, once the, um, once it kind of charges up, the cold air comes in, the hot air rises, and because that's a, such a long pipe there, and you can see I've got a, there's a, it's got a screened vent right at the, uh, the top there. Uh, so there's actually you know, aluminum window screening, uh, plus a, uh, it's actually, it's all, I believe this is three inch ABS pipe. So standard plumbing supply, I just got it at like a hardware store and they actually come with, or like they have all the fittings for you to, uh, uh, that's actually a shower drain. Um, and so it looks really nice uh, and it provides a, a, you know, a rigid barrier. And I just, I just put a, um, a piece of, of aluminum window screening on the back of that. So the insects can't get in, but also mice couldn't chew through it. And that's not a big deal up there, but when I, I'll go outside and I'll show, I'll show how where, where this vent comes out, I, I did need to have that metal uh, screen on there so that mice couldn't chew through the, um, the, uh, the thinner aluminum wire. So that's the general principles is just, I, I found a cool spot in my, in my existing building. And the way that I did that was, where's those uh, thermometers there? The way that I did that is I just took these little high-low thermostats and I put them all around the building and in different places trying to find like a good spot and I mean obviously I, in, in this case I, I, I had a pretty good hunch that this was gonna be the spot it was gonna go because uh, this is on the the northeast corner of the building and so uh, you know the, the southwest corner is the hottest because the, the sun's beating against that wall as it's setting um, and, uh, and, and so that, you know, the, the Northeast, the sun rises there in the first part of the morning, but it, it only touches that, that side of the building, uh, in the, only in the summertime, in the winter, it never touches it. And so <clears throat> that was my hunch. And so I, I basically left one of these thermometers in this corner all winter long, or all summer and all winter long for a whole year, just to kind of monitor the high, low temperatures to see if it was pretty close. And it was. And, um, and then I, uh, I basically, you know, put, just framed in this little, this little wall here. And so this is just, you know, standard, uh, lumber. I got these, these doors were, um, just, re they're just recycled kind of fur doors that I stained up to look really nice to match the rest of the trim. And, um, I, I did insulate this wall in between my stove because I didn't want to have too much heat. I figured if I if I needed to, I could add a vent into this door um, in the future. But so this is actually it's a two by six wall insulated. Uh, there's no other insulation in it. Like this roof isn't insulated up top, but I could have done that if I if it was getting too warm. So I knew I could kind of play around with it. And uh, the um, so we've got the ventilation in. Uh, the other really important thing is I I wanted to have adjustable uh, shelving that allowed air to flow through again so that I, I could make sure I was I could allow the cold air to rise and, and create good circulation but also allow me to modulate the, the temperature a little bit easier uh, and so by by having these these are just standard like Rubbermaid uh, shelves you can buy at most hardware stores I believe these are the the uh, I think they're 16 inch they're, they're like the, the the widest shelf you can buy it was pretty expensive stuff. Like I think all of the shelving for this, you know, there's like one, two, three, four, five shelves and two of them are kind of halves. And there actually is a, there's another one up top there that I use to kind of hang my, my meat on. But this, um, I think it cost like four or 500 bucks. It, it, it was, it was quite a lot of money. And at the time I was like, oh, I, I probably could have just made, you know, my own shelves. But after having used this for only a year now, I'm just really happy I went with this adjustable shelving because it's adjustable. <laughs> you, you never get a design right on the first go around. And so it's allowed me to, you know, I can move it up in, in basically one inch increments uh, up or down so I can make sure that I'm, I'm optimizing space perfectly. So, you know, my, uh, my, my beer shelf, 
you know, it, it clears the, the <laughs> my favorite beer cases by like a quarter of an inch. And, and you know, I've also got my, you know, some wine up there. You know, these things, it just barely sneaks by. Um, and I, I had to kind of tweak all this to figure out where I was going to put everything. And the other reason for that too is like, is the temperature and humidity changes depending on where you are in this, let me turn it back to Celsius here. So even though I've got, so I've, I've, I've got the door open, it was at, uh, I think it was 13 when we first opened it. It's already at 15. You can tell how much warmth is just coming in because the ambient temperature out here is 20, 20. Um, but the, uh, if we're, we'll come down here now and this guy here at the bottom is my cheese cave. It's all in the same building here. And this guy is 65% humidity and it's uh, nine degrees. Uh, Celsius, but you can see the high low there. It's 10 to 6 uh, degrees Celsius is uh, is the high low and um, So you can see I've got you know some this is a, a hard cheddar here and this is some kind of some soft uh, uh, I call it kind of farmer's cheese and, uh, and The reason that this guy's at the bottom you know, And it's only 10 degrees Celsius again cold air sinks down warm air rises and so, you know, this, this middle shelf is going to be about like, you know, 10 and this one's about 13 degrees. It's, there's typically about a, a five degree Celsius temperature change from the bottom to the top. And, uh, uh, that allows me the, all the flexibility I need to store pretty much everything I need to do. Like I ferment my, I have my meat in here. So I'm hanging some, this is a, a beef tenderloin. That's uh, being turned into some beef lonza. It's, it's going to be charcuterie. This is a, a pork jowl that's been smoked and cured. Uh, this is you know a piece of, uh, of belly that's going to be some some pancetta. This is just a smaller uh, beef tenderloin from a smaller animal that we did. This was a this was like a it was like a two thousand pound bull that we did. So you can see this beautiful piece of, of uh, tenderloin there that's going to be ready just in time for for Christmas. Um, but I've also got my my fermentation jars in here, which I'll talk a bit about in a, in a minute and, and why I, I do that. I've got some dried goods. Uh, you know, I've got some, you know, some seeds, some canned things. And uh, and the, in this container here, uh, this is where I was uh, I was curing my bacon, which uh, in, a, little, a little bit later, we're going to go check out how our smoking setup. I'm smoking the bacon right now. Um, and so I'm able to do all that in this one space just by controlling temperature and humidity and just by choosing the right location in this building and having, you know, uh, just one piece of technology that this has changed um, my ability to, to do this stuff and make sure that it's all going to be safe and kind of fit the, um, you know, the, the existing science and, and information about how to how to process uh, and, and preserve this, this, these foods traditionally, uh, I can just put these at different locations and, and make sure it's going to be good. So um, in terms of other little pieces of, of design, uh, I, I think that about covers it. So uh, the, in, in, in your own house uh, or in a garage somewhere, you, you, could, you could place um, get one of those high low uh, temperature humidistats and and get get like a half dozen of them if you really want to get in this that's i i bought like two or three and i've just i think i've 10 right now because I've, I've got them in all my different root cellars just to make sure that everything is good um i've also got them in like you know in in well pits or in places where like things might freeze or in my chicken house or something like that so i can monitor stuff in there they're, they're really really useful and they're only about 20 bucks on uh, on amazon uh, uh, one little pro tip is if you just buy one first, cause they send you a coupon code <laughs> when you buy the first one. Uh, and so you can buy all the other ones to get 10% off. Um, so th th yeah, in terms of how you might find this location in your house, just do the same thing. P put these things around your, your, your existing buildings, find like a corner that's kind of out of the way. If you've got a basement, that would be a great spot to do it. Like I'll, sh I'll go and show my... The, the, the cold room in my parents' place that's, um, that's cool and dry in a, in a minute here. Um, and, uh, and then making sure that you've got some ability to kind of manage the, the cool and the warmth uh, with each other. And so like, again, if, if, I, if, if I found this was getting too cold, I could have also bored a hole, like, like I said, in the, in the door 
or in the wall to allow more warmth to come in. So I could have I could have had two gates, but so far I haven't need, needed to do that. And if it was too warm, I could I could I could replace these doors with insulated doors because this you know there's a lot of heat surface here. So I'm actually really surprised how close I got on my first kind of try. Um, but the 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 key piece is is like is is adaptability with with all of the design work that I've uh, systems that I've tried to design on my farm. I've started to realize it's Murphy's law, and there's there's always at least one variable you get wrong like the first time around. And, and so just knowing that when you go into it and, and having a design that allows you to adapt, like these adjustable shelves, like, you know, like the slide gate, um, you know, this really simple thing, all it is is just a, um, I, like I made this myself, it's just, it's just um, puck board. And so there, there's, you know, two plies here and a, and a single ply here that allows me for the space. And I just siliconed a, a piece of wood on. So it gives me a nice little handle. And um, so that, that allows me to, again, adaptability. Say this wasn't enough oxygen or airflow through. I could just drill another hole or I could make the pipe bigger. I, got, I had all those planned out, but so far... This is a, uh, a, a three inch diameter ABS pipe that's just standard anywhere. Um, puck board slide gate, uh, you know, the same thing at the top. Uh, adjustable shelves that are the, again, you can make them as wide as you want, but I really wanted them to be uh, uh, quite, quite wide. I think, like I said, I think these are, what are they? They're 20 inch shelves, that's what they are. And, uh, so they're fully adjustable. I can put a ton of weight on them. They're really strong. Um, yeah, they weren't cheap, but uh, I think it's well worth the, um, the, uh, the design. Now, the other thing that I added in, uh, and again, this is something that I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna need, but uh, I'm glad I did put it in. This is a little kind of humidifier. So you can kind of see here, that's, that's salt water in there. And the reason it's salt water is I don't want you know mold and stuff to to start growing and so it's like I just dumped a pile of salt in there and I just keep it topped up with water because it's so dry in our climate that we need to do that you might not need to do that depending on where you are but again having that ability to adapt is really simple and so because this thing is placed right next to the slide gate basically as air is coming in my hope was that it, and I actually put in a bunch of kind of rocks and um I'll probably put a bunch more in actually again I, that's another variable I could change because the rocks add surface area, water's gonna wick up on the surface. And as this cold air is flowing across, it's gonna pick up that moisture and hopefully raise the humidity in this building. Because again, I, I, want, I want this to be around 70% humidity. That's the ideal temperature, or sorry, humidity for curing meat, is, is like 70% humidity and about uh, 18 degrees Celsius, uh, which is, a little cheat, cheat sheet here for my uh, for our American friends. Uh, what is that? 65, 65 Fahrenheit. Here, do you guys don't have to do the conversion? So, uh, 18 degrees Celsius, 65 degrees Fahrenheit is that that's the ideal condition for meat. And and I know I like I showed you guys. It's it's at you know 40 or 50 and 15. But the amazing thing again when I re was reading all these books. You know the authors for whatever reason they they give you like one number. It's like it needs to be this. It needs to be seventy percent humidity and eighteen degrees Celsius. It's like okay, well, like, do I die if it goes down two degrees? They don't tell you. And so, I experimented. I haven't died yet. I have cured meats. I have cured cheeses at like thirty percent humidity off of what they say. So they say ninety percent humidity for cheese, uh, seventy percent humidity for meat. I've done it at thirty percent humidity for for meat and as low as like 50% humidity for cheese. It's not the best, you, you, you know, sometimes they get a little dry, but it works. Like it's, it's, it's totally edible, it's totally safe. It just makes a different kind of cheese and a different kind of um, charcuterie. So don't, um, don't be paralyzed by perfection. Like some of the designs online where they're talking about, you know, making a, a meat carrying chamber where they've got, I like guess an old fridge and they're getting like, you know, temperatures and uh, controlled fans and, and humidistats inside and, and you know, it costs you like several hundred dollars just for the, the space and then you gotta keep it plugged in all the time. It's like, our ancestors didn't do this. 
they didn't have all this, this gadgetry. And so I, I wanted to see how far I could push this. And it turns out it's super simple. Um, and so one of the, one of the hacks that you can, uh, you can use for, um, for, uh, like say, say your cheese or your, um, your, um, meat is a bit dry because it's hard to monitor, uh, manage the, the humidity in a, in a building this large. Uh, uh, one of the hacks that I've done is, is once these guys have kind of aged to the point where they're, they're dry enough that I know they're going to keep at room temperature, um, for, for months, if not, you know, years, but it's, it's a, it's a bit too dry and it's kind of crunchy when I, when I slice into it. What I'll do is I'll throw it down into my cheese cave just for a couple days at a higher humidity. And again, this guy's only at 65 right now. That's just because I'm, I'm, it's really early in the year for making cheese for me. I typically, I don't, I only make cheeses in the, in the winter time. And so once I get this guy filled with, um, with cheese and there, there's more cheese that are kind of giving off moisture, um, it will, it will be actually too much moisture. And then I have to, uh, I have to, you know, crack a little bit more. And so I've got holes drilled in the top here and I, I can leave, you know, the lid cracked a little bit. Again, it's, it's, it's like really simple stuff. It's super low tech, but because this building is this little, uh, uh kind of, I call it like a, a cold room, but really it's, it's everything. It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a larder. That's the, that's the traditional term for it is this is what people's larders used to be like. It was everything. It was for dried goods, fermented goods, meats, cheeses. I've got eggs in there. Uh, I've got, you know, some onions. I could, I could put, um, uh, it'd be a great space for squash and things like that. But we have other spaces that we use because we have so much of them. Um, but it's, it's, it's really, I, 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 when I really got into this stuff and, and started playing around, it's way, way simpler than, 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 um, uh, than, than I thought and, uh, and, it, and it was hardly like this whole thing cost me less money than a fridge it was easily under a thousand dollars but this thing takes zero electricity and and it's it's you know it's a big this would be a big fridge like this would be a five six thousand dollar fridge if you wanted to get something this this large and uh, and it, it'll never go bad there's no moving parts or apart from the shelves but they're they're it's a good thing that they're movable and um and so it's super simple uh i, I i'm really really happy with it um okay so that that's a kind of a, a brief overview of of the, this kind of living larder and, and how it was built and and you know how to find the location in your in your building uh now i want to do a, a kind of a, a bit of a deep dive into some of the the kind of the cheesecake stuff the charcuterie and my fermentation uh, uh, stuff for you guys. Mm -hmm.